A major focus of the channel is to simultaneously optimize as many health-related biomarkers as possible. So with that in mind, in today's video, what's optimal for HbA1c, otherwise known as glycated hemoglobin? So to address that, we'll take a look at two studies. In the first, which included more than 6,000 people, we've got blood hemoglobin A1c levels and percentage on the y-axis plotted against age on the x within the 20 to 90 year age range. In youth, around 20 years old, we can see that average HbA1c values are around 5%, whereas in 90 year olds, they're significantly higher at about 6%. In the second study, which included about 378,000 people, and as a quick aside, I always try to look for the largest epidemiological studies to look for age-related changes and all-cause mortality risk. So if anyone's come across larger studies with a larger sample size, please leave it in the comments and I'd be happy to give you a shout out and use the, the data, obviously, in a future video. So in this study of about 378,000 people, average HbA1c values in youth around 20 years for both women and men was about 5.3%, which then increased during aging with a peak in, in the 70 to 80 year range for both women and men. But then something interesting happens, which is it declines. HbA1c actually declines, which is new to me. This is, I haven't yet seen this in the published literature. So I think this is possibly a survivor bias where people who live to older than 70 or 80 are more likely to have relatively lower HbA1c values. So if anyone's come across that story or has more insight, please leave it in the comments and let's share with the community. So from these two studies, we can see that HbA1c increases during aging. And in terms of the what's optimal question, we know that 5 to 5.3% is found in youth. But what about all-cause mortality risk? How is HbA1c related to all-cause mortality risk? And that's what we'll see here. So in this study, which, in, which is a meta-analysis of 46 studies, we've got the pooled hazard ratio, so risk of death for all causes on the y-axis, plotted against the circulating HbA1c level on the x. And when 5 to 6% for HbA1c was defined as the referent, we can see that people who had HbA1c lower than 5% had a significantly increased risk all-cause mortality risk. And we know that because the 95% confidence interval, which is the red line with the data above and below the circle, are completely above a hazard ratio of one. And we can see this illustrated numerically with the hazard ratio there, 90% increased risk. And we can see that that confidence interval is completely above one at 1.04 to 1.36. So having HbA1c lower than 5% was associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. Similarly, people who had HbA1c in the 6 to 6.5% range also had a significantly increased risk, 16% increased risk to be exact. But then the greatest risk was for people who had HbA1c greater than 6.5% with a 71% increased all-cause mortality risk. So to address what's optimal when you including both the aging and all-cause mortality risk data, somewhere in the 5 to 5.3% uh, range may be optimal. So that's what's found in youth. And when considering the HbA1c increases during aging, when uh, considering that lowest risk for all-cause mortality was in the 5 to 6% range, we want to be closer to 5, but not below 5, as that was associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So again, 5 to 5.3%, I think that's a fair range for what's optimal. Which brings us to what's my data? Am I practicing what I'm preaching? Or is my data terrible? So this is for the October 9th blood test. And on that day, HbA1c was 5.1%. Now, if you look at the plots from that I just showed, the two studies on age-related changes, my expected HbA1c based on chronological age is 5.8%. And we're considering that a major focus of the channel is to simultaneously as many health-related biomarkers as possible, so far so good with HbA1c as it's younger than expected based on chronological age. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NED quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, green tea, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, which I've got on here. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.